I have a kind of dull and uninteresting photograph here and before I sort of throw it to the trash can and do away with it I thought let's see if we couldn't do something with it and make it a little more interesting and maybe usable for something so I think that what I'm gonna do the final effect I'm gonna go for here is something that you see a lot in predominantly sort of fine art photography and some of those really nice fine art photography books is kind of a black and white tonal conversion and to do that I'm going to use a couple of techniques in Photoshop and I'm going to use Nick Software's Color Effects Pro 3 because it has some nice little things in there that can save us time. You can certainly do all this in Photoshop but I'm a great believer that uh, you know if there's a plugin that you can use something for just to save you some time I don't think there's any harm in that. I know there's a lot of purists that think you should do everything in Photoshop but I'm all about saving time and getting the job done and moving on to the next thing. So the first thing I'm going to do here is open up the Nick Software Color Effects Pro 3 plugin. And so here we are inside the plugin. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so we can see the image. And I think the effect that I'm going to use is going to be this infrared film. And if I just go back to the defaults, you can see that's what it normally would look like when you open the software. Clearly that's not the effect we want to go for here. And so I'm going to use some of the settings that I like to use. Uh, you have these different methods of conversion here, you know, you can hover over these and, and see the different ones and there's some color ones too. I like this number two, it has kind of a nice softer feel to it. Um, but what we need to do now is tweak these settings. We, all these highlights as you can see are blown out. So the first thing I'm going to do is protect the highlights and get the detail back in there. And then I'm going to protect the shadows and that just a little bit. I'm um, looking overall now. We're actually going to do this in multiple steps. So I'm just looking for kind of a almost just looking at the midtones here, an overall effect. We're going to drop down the contrast, get some detail back in some of these areas. Uh, let's add a little bit of brightness in there, just a little bit, not too much. Don't want to lighten the highlights too much either. So we're going to back that off a fraction. And I think that's not too bad. Uh, let's just drop this brightness down here just a little bit more not too concerned about the shadows right now we'll deal with those separately and I think we'll go with that and we'll go okay and let's just dispose of that top layer I don't want that one so there's sort of stage one I think for the next stage you know let's look at this river there's certainly a lot more detail I know we can get back in this river here and so I'm just gonna hide that layer and go back and select the first one and now I'm going to go back and open up the plugin again. Okay, same as before. Let's zoom in a little. And so this time we're just purely looking at the river. And so I think we can certainly drop that brightness down. Drop the lighting down there a little bit. Uh, maybe just up the contrast a little bit there too. So that's a little bit better for the river. We've got some more detail going on in there. Maybe we'll just back off the highlight protection just a fraction. And go okay. And again, I'm not going to use that top layer, so we'll just lose that. So we have this one here for the river, and then we have this one sort of, for sort of the overall effect. So I'm just going to drag this river layer up the top here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter so I can just paint in the areas that I want to use from that layer. And I'm just going to fill that mask with black. And so it basically reveals the entire layer underneath. And now I'm going to use a paintbrush and I've got the mask layer selected here and I'm just going to paint in I'm using a Wacom tablet here and I'm just going to use the pen to paint in the area that I want to reveal from that layer which is just basically going to be the river so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting here with some white color to reveal that layer underneath for the river and as, as I do that you can see that you know it's exposing that that part there and so let's just go through and paint this in here which just real quickly normally I'd obviously be a lot more accurate with this but for the sake of the video I'm just doing it quickly so you get the the effect and what we can do is if I hide these other two layers you can see what I'm painting back in here and in fact let's just go ahead and while we're here like this makes it a little easier to see thanks to the grid pattern in the background that we need to paint just some more in there so let's just paint a little bit in there like that uh, just very quickly very rough and turn these two layers back on so if I hide this river layer now you can see there it is before and then there it is after it's just a little bit darker just a fraction darker but it's enough to put some detail in there 
So now let's let's go back and think about some of these dark areas on these trees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the background layer again and I'm just going to hide these two here. So you can see that in the original shot there is more detail in these in these shadow areas here. So I'm actually going to open up the filter again and let's just zoom in like we did before. And so this time we're just looking at almost just this section here is all we're looking at. So I'm going to go in of course and I'm going to going to brighten that up a little bit there so we can see the detail in there. You know, let's put a little more contrast in there. Just play with these settings a little bit. All right, there we go and go okay. So this one's going to look really horrible for the most part. And let's lose that top one. And again, I'm just going to drag this one to the top since that's the one I'm working on. And same as before, we'll go through and we'll add a mask to hide everything. I'm going to turn these two layers on there. And so now working on the mask for that new layer that we created, I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to paint in and basically just paint over there just to put a little bit of detail back in some of these darker areas. Uh, maybe this area here on the side too, just very quickly just to sort of open them up. Maybe this corner too is a little bit too dark. And then maybe just using a smaller brush to open up just a little bit. Oops, let's just undo that and do it again. Just open up a little bit of detail there in the wood. So I'm going to turn that one off. There it is before and there it is after with the shadows opened up. So, you know, it's not looking too bad now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these three layers and we'll just turn that off. So there's the original photograph with the color and then here's the black and white conversion with some tweaks. And now just one more time I'm going to go back in to the filter and zoom in here. And this time I think what we're going to do is you know we're going to add this this color effect. So you have a whole plethora of choices here but I think we're just going to go through and just click on a couple of these so you can see what I'm saying about you know some of these color stylizers. Um, that's that's kind of an interesting one. You know, we can click over here and, and just choose a sort of a warm tone that's not too too harsh, kind of a, like a sort of burnt tone there, very light sepia effect. You know, you can go in and play with these settings again and, and get this to be the way that you want it to look. Um, you know, going through there, we have some other ones too, but the one that I'm actually looking for is to go down here to this paper toner. I really like this paper toner one. And again, you can click on here and just go through and choose different ones, you know, hover over them to see them. I always kind of like, you know, this this number six here is nice. It's very subtle. It's not, you know, it's not too overpowering. Let's just turn it up just a little bit. And I think that'll do it and we'll go OK. And so what I'm going to do is just merge those two together here. So let's go through the whole process. We have the color image, then we had the black and white version that we created, and then finally we have this tonal version. And I think that you'll agree that, you know, if let's just merge these two together here, you know, we've taken a, a really dull, uninteresting shot here, but through a variety of little techniques, it's made it perhaps a little bit more interesting by just doing some conversions to black and white and uh, just adding some extra stuff in there. You know, if you zoom in, you know, you can see there's a lot more detail in this image than, than you're really seeing. I've got the screen resolution cranked down for the video. But there's a technique you might want to play with to, to experiment with with some of your photographs. It looks really nice on landscapes, for example, and some portraits. So play with it, give it a go and see what you think.